everybody and welcome again to T Watches a Scary Movie. I'm T and we're talking scary movies. I appreciate you tuning in for another brand new review here. We got a great one coming up for you tonight. We are talking Deadstream, the latest release from Shudder here around the Halloween season about a YouTube streamer that decides to spend a night in a haunted house. Now, if you haven't caught this one, that means you are missing out on Shudder, and I implore you to go and sign up for a subscription. You can do that through Amazon using one of their channels, or you can just go to Shudder directly through Shudder.com and sign up through them. You do get earlier access to a lot of their movies if you do it that way versus going through the Amazon channel, which I'm learning, unfortunately, because I'm getting movies later than everybody else. But we're going to rectify that after this today. We're going to make sure we're going directly through Shudder. Now... If the premise of Deadstream sounds kind of familiar, then that means you've seen a lot of films in the last few years that have kind of invoked that kind of idea. Kind of like Grave Encounters, which uh, was one that we watched together with the group earlier, uh, a few months ago actually, about um, a group of ghost hunters who go and investigate like a haunted, uh, haunted asylum all kind of bad shit happens uh happens while they're there or even uh uh uh, uh oh god dash cam dash cam earlier this year from uh, rob savage and jed shepherd um about the uh the girl who live streams her uh, musical show and unfortunately ends up in the middle of some kind of demonic possession and so this might seem very similar to that but right at the gate what deadstream definitely like sets itself apart from these other shows there is that number one very real the real like uh real like engagement there with the people that are watching um our main character who is uh sean ruddy who is played by writer uh co-writer and co-director joseph winter right off the jump starts off making himself a very unlikable present a presence and i think that's actually one of the better things about it because some of these other movies and shows that are based around the same kind of concept they have the problem to where you know we're supposed to have that moral dilemma of well, do we want good things to happen to this person? Do we want bad things to happen to this person? How do we honestly feel about this person here? And it leaves us kind of in a little bit of a lurch because like even with Dash Cam, there's a lot, a lot of can uh, controversy about the main character, uh, Annie Reedy, if I'm, uh, if, if I'm remembering correctly, to where, um, again, very, uh, very not great in the movie, like a very reprehensible kind of character in person. And then, you know, you kind of see Annie in real life and it's like, ah, all right, that's kind of how, how she is in real life as well, too. And you're left with a moral dilemma of, you know, just because it's a movie, do I still sympathize with this person? And I had said that, you know, by the end of the movie, I definitely was. But I understand folks who just couldn't clear that hurdle at that point there. And they're just like, nope, not having any part of that. And the difference here with Deadstream is that Sean is not made to really be that likable of a person. Like, we're told at the beginning of the film that the reason why he's doing this haunted house stunt is because of issues he's had with his show. He's made some bad decisions. We're not let in 100% on what that is. Could be racial, could be something else. But that some of the streams that we've seen him do just aren't things that, uh, that you know, are really good to do in this day and age. And not only that, but he's not really somebody who apologizes. He made the apology video. Obviously, it seemed very contrite as uh contrite and obviously not really that uh that truthful so a lot of people had issues with it and sean's whole gimmick is that he goes around and does all these things that you know to see if they can be done things that people wouldn't do like how hard is it to get smuggled across the border and uh you know can you attack cops and they're like the baby moses river challenge like things like that that are a little bit on the taboo side obviously and so sean uh, finally gets his sponsors back and decides that you know what he's gonna go ahead and do the one thing that he absolutely hates doing because he's definitely terrified of ghosts and he's gonna stay the night in a haunted house and live stream it and this movie was just a ball of fun it is the absolute party that you're looking for this halloween season because right off the jump sean while again is the guy that we don't really like He's a very funny and engaging guy, though. Like, he's a personality that you would absolutely hate on YouTube, but you'd have to keep on watching. And the fact that Sean is presented as actually being scared as well, I think that's a big, big difference from a lot of the things that we're seeing because some characters, you know, they put up the tough facade and they don't believe in ghosts and, uh, you know, they're not scared till later and it's not real. And Sean, right off the jump, once he's, once he's in this haunted house at that point, is letting us know from the jump there he is afraid of everything to do with this. He doesn't trust anything to do with it he's doing it for views and he's hoping he's really hoping that none of this is real obviously because that's the whole thing about it is that he's doing it because he doesn't think there's any danger to this at all and obviously that does not turn out to be true now 
Uh, from a viewer perspective, obviously, you know, we get to watch along with the people who are also watching Sean because very often we're seeing the comments pop up on the screen while he's doing the stream. Um, and then when he has another guest join him uh, in the house at a certain point, we're still seeing things through like Sean's perspective. And I think that works out really, really well because the use of cameras is completely believable. And that's that's been the better thing with these like um, with these films and TV shows that are set in reality uh, that use like the first person view and all that kind of uh, that kind of like camera work. Because a lot of times like, why would you keep rolling? Why are you doing this? How does how's this camera catching this? And we get to see Sean go around the house and set up all these multiple different cameras. Get to see him set up this other person with a camera. Like cameras are literally everything as he keeps on adding him. And then when something happens, like sometimes there's stuff, you know, maybe might be out of the corner of your eye that you have to pay attention to. But a lot of times Sean's going back and letting us see that this was on the stream that everybody else is watching that he himself didn't catch. And the way this film was put together is very lo-fi and that i say that like very lovingly very positively because so, like some of the ideas of like oh there's a ghost right here or there's a spirit right there um we get to see that uh like sean can't see that obviously but it's on the camera so like you get to watch the footage and then like in real life and it, it's such a great way of doing things and i think sean is like the real life uh, real life like experience for a lot of us because quite often when Sean gets scared he's running off to a closet he's hiding under blankets and sheets uh, he's just absolutely out of it and he's done it's a nope kind of situation and I think that would be a lot of us if we were put in the same position whether we want to admit that or not um, what this film also does a really really good uh, job with is that it's not overly scary. There are definitely parts in it for sure that the ghosts and the monsters, the spirits, the demons, whatever you want to call them, uh, the way they're presented is definitely in a very, very like freaky and scary light for sure. But um, I, I honestly think that adds so much to the experience itself. I really do think that that makes, uh, that makes it a much more enjoyable experience for us because we can laugh along with Sean and everything that he's going through and we still don't have to actually feel like things are that bad or that gory or that creepy or that scary. And I think that's a good, good balance that they found between the two here for sure. Um, along with that, the the fact of the design of the creatures and the monsters and the ghosts and demons and again i'm not going to spoil anything but the the beings that sean comes across some of them are done extremely extremely well to where the makeup's like oh my god that's absolutely terrifying and the other ones it's kind of like <laughs> that's a little bit obviously that that might be a little bit more on the funnier side of things and i think both of them uh, both ways that we see all these different creatures and stuff works. I, I don't think there's any any certain one that I looked at and I wasn't happy about or was disappointed with or I thought looked just absolutely silly. I think they all worked so, so well. And the jump scares in it, because there definitely are a few for sure, um, I love the fact that the jump scares they decided to use were ones that you, know, you would typically feel safe. And I don't want to spoil any of them, but some of these jump scares come in places to where any other movie, that character would be safe where they're at. Think of it like a video game, like uh, Resident Evil. If you're in a room with a typewriter, typically the monsters can't attack you. You're safe. You're good to go at that point. And this movie kind of turns a little bit of that on its head to where no matter where Sean's going, there's not really a safe area. Uh, other things to point out. The use of music is fantastic. I know, uh, I, I believe they wrote, uh, wrote and composed all this music themselves as well too. And it's so fitting for it because there's times where things are happening and Sean just hits like play on a cassette player and is letting like this really creepy music, really fun music hit. And towards the end, there's a sequence, there's a first person sequence is the best, pay, best way to describe it as if it was taken from a video game and the music being played. Everything just was so reminiscent of the game Doom. And I'm talking about the original Doom. If you ever played it before, it was so reminiscent of that that it made it so much fun, such a joy to watch. To the point to where I'd actually buy this score. Like, I'm going to see if there is a digital album of the Deadstream score because I would absolutely love to have that. Um, it's not particularly long and that's a really good thing about this as well is that this concept doesn't really work in my opinion for a long movie. You can't really make two hours out of this and I feel still be as engaging as you want it to be. It's a robust, uh, a very robust 
87 minutes at that point. And keep in mind, again, a couple of that is obviously credits too. So we're looking at just a little bit over an hour 20. And I think that hour 20 goes by very swimmingly. Now, in regards to uh, like the way Shutter's been putting content out, this is just another hit for them, I feel. Um, I feel like they're, they're releasing movies every week, it seems. And not every week, every other week at the very least. And that has been providing just so, so much fun to be a subscriber to Shutter and get to see everything they're putting out. I know VHS 99 is out and that is the next one that I'm going to be looking at here. But kudos to Shutter for giving uh giving these kind of filmmakers um this kind of platform to really do something special because movies like this getting released are absolutely phenomenal and keep guys like me interested in the genre and i think they work so well for a lot of other people that want something more modern something more common something that doesn't have to deal with the rules of a lot of other monster movies you know we had halloween kill uh, halloween ends recently and there's still so much backlash coming out about that love that movie by the way but doing something that doesn't have to be a franchise it's low budget it's relatable um and especially as a streamer myself as a podcaster uh i think that this movie absolutely speaks to me and will speak to a lot of you so Check out Deadstream right now on Shudder. Absolutely worth the watch, y'all. Hey, everybody. I appreciate you checking out this video, whether it was a review, whether it was a new episode, whether it was an unboxing, an interview, or whatever else. I want to remind you, you can check out my separate reviews also on my YouTube page. And new full episodes go up every Wednesday night on YouTube at 8.30 p.m. Mountain Standard Time and on your favorite podcasting platforms at 8 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, like, and share. My name is T. We've been talking scary movies. Stay scared. Thank <laughs> you.